Hello there you gorgeous human being you, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be having a good hard squint at Samsung's latest Galaxy A54 5G smartphone. Now while a Galaxy A50 series smartphones often provide stunning value for money to anyone who can't afford an S series flagship, last year's A53 5G kind of buggered it all up with some really shoddy performance. And that was all thanks to the not particularly splendid Exynos chipset running the show. Unfortunately, Samsung has crammed yet another Exynos chipset inside of the Galaxy A54, this time an Exynos 1380. But is that performance any better? And what about that all new 50 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization? Well, get ready for a cracking unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy A54, complete with a camera test, bit of game in action, all that good stuff ahead of my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, what do you get in the box? Well, first up, you've got a Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. You've got yourself a Type-C USB cable and a quick start guide. And as usual, that's it. No power adapter, no condom case. Right, so the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G all set up, ready to rock. And the design, as usual for an A-series Samsung smartphone, pretty slick. No real shocks or surprises. It's a 6.4 inch device, so reasonably compact by 2023 standards, helped by the fact that the bezels aren't super thick, although a little bit chunkier on the left and right edges than I would have hoped for. Looks good though, it's a lovely flat display, dinky wee selfie cam orifice housed up top. And while there's no pre-installed screen protector here on the Galaxy A54, the good news is Samsung has slapped on some Gorilla Glass 5 protection, so hopefully it should prove reasonably resistant to scratches and scuffs. And flip it around to the arse end as well, that is also constructed from Gorilla Glass 5. Always good to see on a mid-range smartphone, better than usual plastics. Although it is a shiny, glossy finisher on the A54, I do prefer a matte finish because it tends to be a bit more resistant to fingerprints and greasy grime. After just half an hour or so of handling, this back end is already starting to look a wee bit mucky. But thanks to the bright finish, it's not immediately obvious. This, in case you're wondering, is the awesome Lime model. Is it awesome? Well, I think it's rather nice. Unfortunately, rather nice Lime doesn't have quite the same ring. If you're not a fan, well, you can also grab the Galaxy A54 in awesome graphite, awesome white, or awesome violet. And normally I'm a fan of my purpley smartphones, but I've got to say that awesome violet not really doing it for me. Just reminds me of those Palmer violet sweets you used to occasionally find bunged in a pick and mix back in the day. Absolutely rank confectionery that was. Just tasted like you were munching on a bowl of potpourri. Anyway, I digress. The A54 5G, as you can see there, sports a similar jutty camera lens design to the Galaxy S23 series. And those lenses do stick out quite a distance as well. So when you've got this phone sat on a table or desk or whatever, there's going to be a fair bit of wobble. But yeah, while it's not the most thrilling design, it's certainly very smart and sleek. And then you've got a plastic frame as well with a matte finish, so at least this won't get all greasy and grimy, touch wood. And yeah, considering it's a 6.4 inch, it got a good bit of heft to it as well at just over 200 grams. Oh, and it's great to see that just like last year's model, the Galaxy A54 5G is IP67 water and dust resistant as well. So you can take it into a bubbly bath or hot tub, whatever you want. Doesn't matter if you drop it in, just pluck it out, give it a bit of a towel and down, should be fine. Now, Samsung fans will be right at home with the Galaxy A54 because it is running One UI 5.1 on top of the latest, freshest Android 13. And what that means is a very similar software experience to what you'd find on the likes of the Galaxy S23, but for a much nicer price. So yeah, you do get some crapware bunged on here and you've got no say in the matter, the likes of LinkedIn, Facebook, Spotify. Fortunately, you can get rid of pretty much all of this. So bugger off Facebook. In the bin, LinkedIn and booking.com can certainly f**k off.com. And yes, you do get the usual plethora of Samsung services and apps as well. Personally, I find this just bloats the phone because you're doubling up on stuff Google already has covered, the likes of Bigsby, not necessary. You've got an internet browser, got smart home shenanigans. But if you're already balls deep into Samsung services, then you may prefer these to the Android alternatives. What I do really like is the automation shenanigans that Samsung has plugged into Android, like the modes and routines. Just allows you to set up quick and easy profiles based on the time of day or what you're actually up to. You've got the usual themes and customization options. You can quickly change up the color of the UI. The battery and device care section is great as well, just to help keep your Galaxy phone running smoothly. And you've got some respectable gaming features as well, which I'll touch on later. Storage options, pretty good here on the Galaxy A54 as well. You've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs of storage space. It'll cost you an extra 50 quid for double the storage. And yeah, a good chunk of that is used up by system files, but nothing too horrendous. 
And the good news is that unlike those mega expensive S series smartphones, the Samsung A54 does actually support micro SD memory cards. Although you will need to chuck that in the second SIM slot. And it is great to see that the Samsung Galaxy A54 does support eSIM as well as two physical SIMs. You've got full 5G support naturally as well as Wi-Fi 6. Now one of the highlights of the Galaxy A series smartphones is always Samsung's gorgeous Super AMOLED displays. And the 6.4 inch panel here on the Galaxy A54 5G certainly butters my spuds. It's a 2340 by 1080 pixel resolution display, Full HD+. So those visuals are crisp, they are fresh, they are poppy as out as well when you're enjoying some vibrant content, a nice bit of anime action. Really is crack for the eyeballs, no worries with the viewing angles, the brightness levels, they do max out at a thousand nits now, so this is brighter than last year's A53 display. And as today is actually a sunshiny day here in Blighty, shock horror surprise, I did run outside and test it out, and yep, outdoor visibility, no problems at all. And this OLED screen even tops off at 120 hertz as well, so skimming through the UI and supported apps all feel super creamy smooth. And continuing the solid media creds of the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G is a stereo speaker setup. So let's crack on and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! And it's not a bad bit of audio spaffed out by this thing, gotta say, reasonably loud on that top of volume, so even if there's a fair bit of background noise, you shouldn't be straining to hear what is going on, and the sound isn't too tinny either. Unfortunately, while Samsung Galaxy A50 series smartphones used to come with a headphone jack, Samsung did away with that about a generation or two ago, so none of that here. You do have Bluetooth 5.3 streaming though, my brief bit of testing so far, that seems to be absolutely fine, but I will be fully reviewing the Samsung Galaxy A53, so stay tuned for more on that. And something else I'll be keeping a close eye on is the performance, because Samsung has once again stuffed one of its own Exynos chipsets inside of the Galaxy A54, this time the 1380, backed by 8 gigs of RAM. I gotta say though, first impressions are pretty good here on the A54, certainly compared with last year's A53. I've only seen a couple of little judders, here and there so far when I've been opening up apps, skimming around the UI and everything, and that's a marked improvement over last year's model, which frankly was a wheezy mess if you even attempted to browse a website. Pretty respectable Geekbench 6 scores though, so I was fairly optimistic going into the gaming test. So no f***ing about, I thought might as well storm straight in there with the big gun, so I loaded up Genshin Impact and had a good hour-long play session on this bad boy with medium graphics settings. And thankfully, while it wasn't a super fluid frame rate at all times, I didn't see much in the way of judders and stumbles in that frame rate, even as I approached the hour mark. The Exynos 1380 seemed to handle all of the fisty cuffs and high drama, no worries whatsoever, even when things got pretty intense with lots of evil gribbly things trying to bash my face in all at once, I still found the game remained perfectly playable, again a massive step up from last year's effort. And no issues with overheating either, the back end of the phone certainly started to get a little bit warm after about 20-30 minutes of gaming, but it didn't get any worse than that, and it didn't seem to impact the performance. But all the same, I'm going to slap my sim into the Galaxy A54 user as my full-time phone to make sure the performance is good enough for everyday shenanigans. I know, yeah, while Samsung's gaming mode might be a bit bare, a bit stripped back compared with some rivals, you've got the likes of the priority mode which can block notifications, you can also keep tabs on how the Galaxy A54 is handling life while you're gaming. And next up, the battery life, and again it's something I can't really comment on until I've been using the Galaxy A54 for at least a week as my full-time smartphone. But as long as that Exodus proves pleasingly energy efficient, well, you should get a full day of life out of a single charge, no worries, because you've got a 5000mAh capacity battery stuffed in there. So far it's been trickling down at a pretty typical rate, so I'd expect around 5-6 to six hours of screen on time per charge, but of course I've only just started using this thing, I've been blazing through Genshin Impact, all kinds of stuff, so it'll probably work out a little bit better than that. When it is fully drained, you can juice up the Galaxy A54 again using 25 watt wired charging, providing you have a power adapter of course, or you plug it straight into a laptop or something. It's not as quick as some rivals that you'll find from Realme, Xiaomi, Poco, etc, but it's pretty decent. But no wireless charging support here, which to be fair is again pretty rare at this sort of price point, it's only the likes of the Nothing Phone and the iPhone SE. Oh, excuse me, involuntary reaction. It's only the likes of the Nothing Phone and the Apple alternative that offers wireless charging at this sort of price. 
So to finish up, let's have a wee gander at that camera tech. And what Samsung has slapped on the arse end of the Galaxy A54 is a 50 megapixel primary sensor with optical image stabilization. Apparently it's an all new larger sensor for the Galaxy A50 series. So you now got bigger pixels for improved low light performance, allegedly. And again, this is something I will be rigorously testing out over the next week or two for my in-depth Galaxy A54 review. But here's just a few test samples that I snapped around the old homestead the past 24 hours with this phone. And certainly so far seems to be a respectable everyday snapper, the usual Samsung output, slightly boosted colors in places just to really bring your photos to life. Ambient pics still seem to pack in plenty of detail. HDR situations don't seem to be a problem. And I will of course be fully testing those night shots. You do have a dedicated night mode for the evening snaps for just capturing a long exposure shot and all of the usual bonus stuff, including the obligatory portrait mode, tweak the strength of the blur effect, and then you can edit that post process in any way. And all the usual Samsung staples, the likes of the food mode, of course, and you've got that pro camera mode with the option to change up the likes of the white balance, the ISO levels, the shutter speed. And you have two other lenses packed into the A54 as well, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. And it's a good one for fancy action shots, otherwise just basically packing a lot into your frame. And you've also got the obligatory five megapixel macro shooter as well, if you want to get really up close to your subject. I'm sure friends and family members wouldn't mind you doing this to them. No real surprises when you switch to video mode either. You can capture footage at full HD resolution at 30 or 60 FPS, otherwise 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. And again, here's some simple clips that I just snapped around the home over the past day with the Galaxy A54. And Samsung blowers usually do a pretty good job of video capture. And so far, yep, the results are looking good, but plenty more incoming. And then if we flip reverse it, you've got a 32 megapixel selfie shooter, which can snap your mug in all of its bleary eyed, haggard looking glory. Seems to do a particularly job of capturing those bags under the eyes if you haven't slept particularly well all week. So hooray for that. Oh, and I almost forgot the fun mode. How could I almost forget the fun mode? It's so fun. It's just so much gosh darn bloody wonderful fun. Oh good, look, I'm a goddamn gherkin. My life is complete. And much like the rear camera, that selfie cam on the Galaxy A54 can capture up to 4K resolution footage, again at 30 frames per second. And the audio pickup so far seems absolutely fine. And that right there in a, I believe you'll agree, delightful little nutshell is the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. As I say, it starts from 450 quid here in Blighty and available right now via the likes of Samsung's own website. Is it actually worth an asking price? Well, so far, it certainly seems like a massive improvement over last year's A53, just in terms of the performance, which was the major letdown of last year's model. So I'm certainly more optimistic, but as I say, I'll be slapping my SIM in there using it as my full-time phone, so stay tuned for my in-depth Galaxy A54 review. In the meantime, if you've been using this as your full-time blow, it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do both subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.